So the first thing we want to do, as always, is pray, but with purpose, and understand the meaning of why we're praying. Om Namo Arihantanam Om Namo Sitanam Om Namo Ayariyanam Om Namo Ajayanam Namo Dore Savasahunam Eso Panchanamo Karo Sava So imagine you're sitting in a dark room. So if you remember last year I convinced you that all of your anger is only, all of anger is only ever directed at yourself. So then I poked a little hole in the dark room. Then I convinced you that objectivity does not exist. Only subjectivity exists, if you remember. So boom, uh, okay, we poked a couple more holes in the dark room and then kind of spears of light are coming inside the room. Then I convinced you in a later class that there's no such thing as a fact. There are no facts ever. So I punched a big window in the dark room. Okay? And now you can peek outside at the world around you a little bit. Um, you already knew that you're not your body. But last class I convinced you that you're not even your thoughts. Not only are you not your body, what we consider you, your soul, is not your thoughts and not your brain. So, okay, boom, now I punched a huge hole in the room. Okay, so today is the day that we've been leading up to, the kind of the culmination of all of those classes. Uh, today is the day that we completely obliterate the room. Uh, take a look around you because that room is the world around you right now. So today I'm going to present the case against free will. Okay, you do not have free will. Well, why does it matter and what does that have to do with Jainism? Well, one of the kind of most interesting things about Jainism, the thing that everybody is drawn to with questions at the beginning is this property of the soul of infinite knowledge, right? How is it that anything can have infinite knowledge? And the other thing that people always are very interested in are these properties of karma. How is it that these little particles can influence our life and influence our actions and how is it that our past actions attracting these little particles can have such an effect on the world well all of that is possible and you can know how it's all possible if you consider the possibility that free will as you understand it right now doesn't exist so what's the case against free will okay there are two pieces of evidence one is that scientific evidence suggests that your movement is predictable before you decide to do it. And two is the fact that your thoughts do not originate from your conscious brain, but from your subconscious brain, which we talked about last week. So can anybody summarize what we talked about, not last week, a couple weeks ago? What does it mean when we say, you are not your thoughts? Does anybody remember? Yeah, you, are, you are not your body. The brain is part of the body, right? And all the thought comes through the brain. You, it's there are among a million things comes to the brain. You think this is your own thoughts, but this is just one of the things that you're focusing on. Exactly. So, so thoughts originate from the subconscious brain. Right. Millions and millions of thoughts, which you have somehow you have no idea about, but you choose to pay particular attention to different ones. And you call that thinking. And what do we mean by you? Your soul. Your soul pays attention to particular different thoughts and you think that you originated them, but you did not. So let's get into the, the scientific experiments. So this scientist, Benjamin LeBay, used EEG to show activity that activity in the brain's motor cortex can be detected 300 milliseconds before a person feels that he has decided to move. So that means if you say, I'm going to go over there, then he has predicted that activity in your brain before you decided to do that. 
So another scientist <clears throat> extended that study uh, using fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging. Um, so in this experiment, subjects were asked to press one of two buttons while watching a, a series of images on a computer screen and that showed random letters that appeared on the screen. So the scientist asked the subject to report which letter was visible at the moment they decided to press one of the buttons. Okay, so they did the experiment and they said, oh, I pressed the button, I, want, I decided to press the button when the letter A was visible on the, or when the letter, let's say, D was visible on the screen. Well, the exper experimenters found that there are two regions of the brain that contain information about which one of the two buttons they would press seven to seven, 10 seconds before the letter appeared. So if they chose D, they said, I pressed the number two button, I decided to press the number two button when the letter D was on the screen. Actually, the scientists predicted that they had decided when the letter A was on the screen to press the second button. Okay? Their brain had decided it before, their subconscious brain had decided it before their conscious brain was aware of that decision. Okay? So similar to how uh, you are not your thoughts, your conscious brain uh, is only an interpreter of the thoughts that originate from your subconscious brain. Okay, that's the second experiment. Uh, so the third experiment was Direct recordings from the motor cortex showed that the activity of only 256 neurons was sufficient to predict with 80% accuracy a person's decision to move their body 700 milliseconds before he became aware of it. So 256 neurons, that's a drop in the bucket for your brain, right? Your brain has millions and millions of neurons. But only 256 were needed to predict with 80% accuracy when and whether you were going to move your body. So, let's go to, that was kind of the hard science explanation. Now let's go to anecdotal evidence, a little bit more uh, psychological. Psychology is a science, but uh, I guess they, these experiments aren't um, as complete as the, as the first three. So, as you know, people who are, hey, come on in, Bern. Sorry, I'm all out of No, no problem. Uh, today we're talking about free will and how we don't have any. <laughs> so we just, dis we just discussed uh, the hard science about scientists can predict your decision to move your body before you actually decide to do it, uh, on the order of 700 milliseconds. Um, so now we're going into anecdotal evidence that um, people, as you know, people who are susceptible to hypnosis can be suggested to perform different tasks and when they ask, when you ask somebody why they perform that task under hypnosis, they'll give reasons that have nothing to do with it. They'll be like, oh, I wanted to do that or something like that. And most interestingly, if you, experiments have been performed on people with split brains. So that means the left half doesn't have as much communication with the right half as in normal, uh, normal people. Um, and so it, it, because of that lack of communication, there are what appears to be two different people inhabiting the same body. It's not two different people, but they have two different personalities and things like that. So, um, let's say, just to give an example, um, let's say you're a split brain person and we're doing an experiment. And you know we're doing an experiment and we're in your house. And I will give you, I will uh, suggest to you, give you a suggestion, we're in the living room, and I will say, okay, go into the kitchen for purposes of this experiment. Okay? And I speed that into your left brain. Okay? You go into the kitchen, and then I, I interrogate your right brain. And I say, why did you come into the kitchen? Your right brain will say, oh, I came into the kitchen to get a Coke. I came into the kitchen because I was thirsty, I wanted a Coke. Well, what just happened? Your right brain found itself in this circumstance where you were, you were going into the kitchen, and invented a reason to decide you were going to the kitchen because it had no idea that your bodily body was following the instructions of the left brain and you went into the kitchen because I asked you to. Okay, so that's kind of an anecdotal evidence. So now let's bring all that together. Okay, the culmination of every, all the types of scientific evidence that I just gave to you is this. 
if I hooked you up to a bunch of invasive sen sensors all over your body and monitored you in a scientific room experiment, um, I can predict on very short time scales that you will get up from the chair you're uh, sitting in and you'll go read a magazine. I can predict when you'll stop reading the magazine, when you'll become bored and think about what you'll make for dinner that night. I can predict that you'll pull out your phone and call somebody. And I can predict all of these things on short time scales before you decide to do any of that. In fact, you haven't decided, okay? I'm not saying that a decision hasn't been made. A decision has been made by your subconscious, but you, as we understand it, have not decided. Okay, so let's start with a, a simple example. So I, I'll give you a simple choice, okay? You pick A or B. Let's say um, it could be two entrees at a restaurant, okay? A decision will be made by your subconscious brain and your body will act in accordance with that decision. But what you, what scientists call your conscious brain and what Jainism calls your soul, had nothing to do with the decision. If I ask you why you made that decision, you will give me 100% pure bullshit as to what the answer is, why you made that decision. Uh, you'll tell me, I picked the healthier option because I ate a bunch yesterday. Or you may tell me, I like enchiladas more than I like chili rellenos, so that's why I picked that. But all of that is 100% backwards rationalization that your brain has concocted to rationalize the decision that your subconscious has made. Even though, let's say it's true, you ate a bunch yesterday, you could have easily told me, well, I chose the tastier option because I didn't have breakfast today. Okay, or you could have told me, um, I like enchiladas more than chili rellenos, but I wanted to try to do some, something new today. Uh, you know, I, I didn't want to have the same old thing, I felt like something new, I didn't want enchiladas today. Okay, so, all four of those statements could be true at the same time. You just picked one out of the air and decided to tell that to me. Okay, and I can't, I can't disprove that to you. I can't say, no, that's not true, because you, you, you said that to me for these reasons, but you could have easily said that, because I can't rewind reality and play it again and show you that your reason was 100% made up by your conscious brain. So, questions on that so far? I've been talking a bunch so far. What do you call the guts? The guts? You Subcon your subconscious. It's not really from your gut. <laughs> you go with your guts, right? You go with your guts decision. Are you going to change that in your office say, oh, well, from your subconscious, <laughs> what do you feel? <laughs> so, I know what you're going to say, okay? Demir, there's no way that's possible. The brain cannot backward rationalize every single decision I make over the course of every day, over the course of a lifetime. It's too much work. I am telling you that that is the only job of your conscious brain, is to interpret the reality that it finds itself in. And it's extremely good at giving you the illusion that your subconscious brain doesn't exist. Okay? And so I'll explain with the scenario that a, a lot of us have had. Have you ever been dreaming, and you're half asleep and half awake, and you hear something in reality? Let's say you hear a dog barking, okay? You incorporate that sound into your dream, don't you? But in your dream, have you ever been like, wow, that's so strange. I'm in the middle of an office. I wouldn't expect to hear a dog barking here. That's so strange that I heard that sound here. No, you've never been, that have ne has never happened to you. What happens when you're dreaming is you invent a history of, oh, I'm at the dog park. I've been at the dog park for 30 minutes, and it's so totally natural for me to hear that sound, and that's why I heard that sound. And in fact, I hear a bunch of other dogs barking. So you incorporate that into your dream. So your brain just rationalized 30 minutes of reality in an instant in your dream. And you mean to tell me it can't think of a reason you chose a burrito for dinner that day? Okay, it's, your brain is, a, that's how powerful your brain is. Is that, that's how powerful it must cling to the illusion of a coherent reality around you. That it will invent experience for you that is 
uh, in an instant and confuse your body into thinking that the things that are happening around you have some sort of coherence. Okay, so that was a very simple example. So let's go with the more complicated example. Let's say you're making a really big decision. Say, which girl you want to marry out of two girls, or which house you want to buy after three houses, one of three houses. So you decide, well, okay, this is a very serious decision, so I'm going to make a list of the pros and cons of each. Uh, you see that one girl or one house has more pros and cons. Okay, but that's not the end of the story. That's not how we, how we, one might have a bigger list and one might have a smaller list. But you say, wait, these things are different, right? You may not care about a small yard as a con of a house, but you may care about the long commute. So what do you do? You weight the items on the list, right? You weight your pros and you weight your cons. And then I'll ask you why you made the decision. Why, why did you choose that house, Chintan? And Chintan, you'll tell me, here's why I made the decision. Here's the weighted list. I have more pros on this house, or, or I may have less pros, but these weights are more important to me, and that's why I made the decision. That's an example of free will, Timur. You're wrong. I, I freely was able to choose between these things, and this is why, and I'm telling you why. And I will tell you that that is a happy accident, that that decision comported. Hey, come on in. Oh, sorry. No problem. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Let me make some space for you here. Today we're talking about free will and why we don't have any. Um, um, so if we, if we don't have free will, then it's a lot easier to believe in things like Kevogyan, which is infinite knowledge. And it's a lot easier to believe that karma will affect our life. So we just started an example. Um, we, let's say you're deciding a house to buy, and you have three different houses. And you make a list, and you tell me, I put this amount of weight on this amount of list, uh, these pros and cons for each list. And I'm going to tell you that that's a happy accident, that your decision comported with the results of that list. And I'll refute this with another scenario. Okay, so. Have you ever been in a position to judge a group of people, or let's say a group of job applicants, or in my case, a group of essays written by students? And you want to be objective, right? You don't want to be subjective. So you say, um, I'm going to create these separate categories, and I'm going to rank them all into each category, whether it's personality or experience in the case of a job applicant, or whether it's the case of you know grammar, main idea, topic, conclusion, in the case of an essay. Okay, so you score all these people in these individual categories, and then you decide, well, I'm gonna add up the scores for each person to see who won, and the person with the highest score wins. Then you look at the person or thing that has the highest point, point total, and what do you say? You say, this person won? This essay one, no, 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 there's no way that can be right. Something's wrong with my list, something's wrong with my rubric, right? Let me go redo it and let me uh, decide what's wrong. And then you redo the score sheet and you're like, oh yeah, this person won, that makes a lot more sense. No wonder my, my list was screwed up, my weighted list was screwed up, okay? Well, when you choose a woman or a house because of these reasons, it was only an accident, Jintan, that the weighted list that you showed me comported with the decision that you made. What would happen was ha sometimes you would say, sometimes you would create the weightest list and you say, fine, that was perfect. Um, and sometimes with that list, um, look, here, I'll give you an example. You, can, you come to me and you say, here's my weighted list, I'm buying this house. And I say, okay, fine, I'm buying the other house. And then sometimes that loss would create a feeling inside of you that said, no, 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 I changed my mind. That house is the one I really want. Okay, you buy the other house, the one I decided on earlier. And sometimes you would say, fine, you buy that other house, that's perfect. I wanted this house, and this is the house I want, and I told you why, because I presented you this weighted list. But because the first scenario, uh, we couldn't have seen that that would have happened, just like with the job applicant scenario, I can't prove to you that 
If you had come out with the wrong decision on your weighted list for your house, you would have said, oh no, no, my scoring rubric was messed up. You know, I, let me redo this and then it'll, it'll come out right. You know? I can't prove that to you. But I can do that with different people and show you that different people will have the same reaction. So questions about that? I have one. Uh, usually, uh, as you rightly said, there are situations in life where you feel that, okay, you rated all the, both the options very carefully. Right. And then you go with option one after a lot of hesitation. And then maybe a few weeks later, then you again start thinking on the same lines, thinking maybe did I do it correctly or not? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I should have chosen that option. Right. So in this case, what is really happening? I mean, is it because your subconscious mind is still with the other option? Yes. And your conscious mind made a decision based on you know the parameters that you wanted to do, and then it it keeps haunting you. Right. Meaning, uh, you you always you then start thinking why or what were the reasons that you went with this option in spite of feeling that the other option was better. So. Right. What's happening is your subconscious mind is uh, considering the other option. And then it's producing a feeling in your body. And your conscious mind is interpreting that feeling correctly as, well, maybe I made the wrong decision. Right? But your conscious mind had nothing to do with the decision itself. <clears throat> your conscious mind is interpreting the feelings that your body is experiencing. No, so at the first place when the decision was made, so... Mm -hmm. Was it coming from the conscious mind or the subconscious mind? That subconscious is mind makes all the decisions. Every decision um, in your whole life. Hmm. Other questions about what we talked about? So I have a follow-up comment. Let's uh -huh. say the house example that you gave. A year down the road, there's tremendous rainfall. This house is flooded versus the other house is not flooded now. What is the thought process? So it's a separate events, right? You can only make, your subconscious mind only makes decisions based on, well, who knows what it's based on, but it's based on the things that have happened to you, it's based on your karma, it's based on your, um, <clears throat> what you had for breakfast that day. You know, unfortunately, this has to do with my profession. There has been a study done saying that uh, sometimes judges have trials and these trials last half a day for very short cases and then the afternoon will be another, another half day, a separate trial. And sometimes the trial will be many days and there are different decisions that go on in, in the trial. And there have been studies that show that as you get closer to lunchtime, the judge gets hungrier and hungrier and makes poorer and poorer decisions. Okay? And then the same thing with doctors, right? You know about uh, you know about having a very young or going to the hospital in September when all the med students are there, right? You get worse treatment, right? Because all the med students have to start out and they have to learn somewhere, right? So the decisions are made. Who knows what the decisions are based on? That's kind of far afield from your uh, question. But it's uh, two separate decisions, right? You only have as much information as you have then. And then if a later event occurs and you start regretting that, well, that's a feeling that your conscious brain is interpreting. Okay, so should we have those kind? Of, is it okay to associate to the decisions made in the past? Like, you know, oh, I'm glad I bought this house versus not because that got flooded, or it's like, crap, I bought this house that got flooded versus this one, and then have that. You should not have those, and you should try to eliminate all of those. You should try to forget everything that happened because it has nothing to do with who you are now, who you will be in the future, what kind of um, nirjara you can do now for your soul. Um, that's what we mean when we say the past doesn't exist, right? <clears throat> who cares about what could have been? Why would you spend, and this is both goes from a spiritual side as well as a practical for your life side, why waste your brain cycles about worrying what might have happened in the past? Um, why waste your imagination about what could have happened if you bought that other house and it hadn't flooded? You're in your present circumstances. You have to deal with it now. Right. Okay? Right. Oh, just in closing thoughts, the reason being it could also be that self-assurance, self-confidence. Oh, 
going back to the topic that my conscious brain did these decisions. Okay, I was assured that I was, I had rational thoughts, whether it <laughs> came from conscious or subconscious. I mean, I, I don't know, we may be experiencing similar things at work too, but. Right, so one of the things we talked about last week was this thing you brought up, your rational thought. And you explained that, well, did it originate in the conscious or subconscious? Well, what we talked about was all thoughts originate in the subconscious and they're interpreted as a conscious, con by your conscious brain. So what that means is, let's say you're at work and you have a problem. And you, your problem is A and you, I, you sit down and you think. And you say, well, A and you think B and you think C and you think D. And you solve your problem. And you say, Thimmer, I am my thoughts, I directed my thoughts to A, B, C, and D, and I solved my problem at work. That's how things get done. How can you tell me that I am not my thoughts? I am telling you that all of those thoughts, A, B, C, and D, originated in your subconscious brain, and along with a million other thoughts about you will need to call your wife. What am I going to have for work that day? I knew me to move my hand here to get the mouse. I need to click this. Where is this file? What did I think about that movie that happened last time? In the space of an hour, you went from A to D. But you went to Z, to Z, to Y, to X, to a million other thoughts that happened in your brain. You, oh, your awareness or your soul only choose to focus on B, C, and D. And you told me that I choose to think, I chose to think B, C, and D to get to the solution to my problem. But you didn't, you only cho chose to pay attention to those particular thoughts. So all thoughts originate in the subconscious and um, we only pick out different ones. Our, con our awareness, our soul only picks out different ones. So if we go to the popular conce conception of free will, okay, that consists of two assumptions that each of us could have behaved differently than we did in the past. And number two, that we are the conscious source of most of our thoughts and actions in the present. So what does it mean, number one? I could have behaved differently in the past. Well, I had a choice, like our example, and I could have made another choice. And that's why I'm telling you that free will exists. So let me give you another example. Let's talk about the future. <coughs> Um, let's say you're thirsty again and you decide to go to the fridge and you decide that you're going to drink water or milk. And you say, Thimir, I decided to drink water or milk. I decided one and that's my choice. I made a free will. There was nothing that was encumbering my choice. And I'm going to say, you completely forgot about the orange juice, the apple juice and the iced tea in your fridge. So in what way did you make a choice out of what you wanted to drink, right? You only had the two thoughts in your head. So now we can see how karma might work, okay? When you're in a particular state of mind, you only feel like you have a limited number of options, even though you have almost an infinite amount of options that you can choose from. And this is how something like Papanu Bandhu Pap works, okay? When your pop comes to fruition, and you commit a pop as a result of that, it's because you only had a conception of limited things to do. You, everybody starts out in a Papa Nubandu Pop mindset, this cycle, this continuous cycle of following your desires. If we're lucky, we get into a Papa Nubandu Punya mindset, okay? Where we decide, hey, I don't have to chop down this mango tree to get the mangoes. I can chop down this little branch. And if we're lucky, we get into a punya nubandu pop mindset where we say, hey, I can just pick the mangoes from the tree, right? You don't even have a conception that you have other options. And if we're extremely lucky, we get into a punya nubandu punya mindset where we realize, I don't have to do anything to hurt this tree. I can pick the mangoes off the ground to get at what I want, okay? So, in what way was you choosing water and milk a free choice when you had no conception of your other options? I'm telling you, that is not a free choice as we understand it right now, as you think your life is going right now. That is not a free choice, okay? So, somebody give me some more examples. I've been doing a lot of talking. This is a discussion and I want to hear what you have to say.
or comments or questions about what I talked to you about. Hopefully I have convinced you. Now this room is obliterated, okay? This reality has nothing to do with the rationalizations that your brain has performed to make some kind of sense about the things that happen in your life. Okay, what is the reality? The reality is, is that karma affects your life in more ways than you know. And you are not your brain, you're not your body, you're not your thoughts. You are a soul trapped, trapped in this entire illusion of reality. The only thing that exists is your soul, my soul, and your soul, and your soul, and your soul, and everybody's soul, is the only thing that's true. So questions or comments about any of that? So the soul is, the subconscious is coming from the soul? So the soul is, uh, <clears throat> the soul is uh, trapped in the body, the subconscious is formed by the brain, and the conscious is formed by the brain. And aware, what people call awareness, we call a soul. And what people call consciousness, we call a soul. Interpreting, uh, interpreting those things. Um, in that, and one thing that I didn't bring up is the word mind. Because when you talk about the word mind, you confuse all of these things, okay? So let's, let's talk about um, the soul. It is possible for um, your body your brain to experience communication from the soul. Some people have, the textbooks say that that's true. Um, if anybody doesn't have a textbook, let me know. And then I have a couple extra textbooks. The textbooks say that, that that is true. I cannot tell you that I've experienced that. Some people here have experienced that. But normally, um, normally we have no inkling that our soul is within, within us. That is, we cannot feel it, and we cannot think about it. So questions or comments about what we talked about? So when we say the decisions are already made, right? Which is based on our karma. Yes. Right, at least it's influenced by the karma. Absolutely. So that means the destiny, the destiny is already made for that as well. And that is how, if someone achieved Kevalyan, they might know what you're going to be in the next life. Understood. They might know what you're going to decide. They might know the path that you're going to take. That is why when, um, that is why when Mahavir Swami was talking to different people, he would tell people, oh, you were an elephant in your last life, and now you're reborn as Chandakosha, right? Or he might tell you in 30 lives from now, you are going to attain liberation. So the path is set. And you can't change the path. If the path is already set, and when you take a decision based on which has already been made, that means your destiny is already set. We're talking about free will as we know it, okay? okay? So, what a decision has been made by your subconscious, right. and you can put yourself in different states, as we talked about, to make your sub, to help your subconscious make different decisions. Hmm. But we're talking about the concept of free will free as will we as know we it. Know. Okay. I'm telling you that that's wrong. that's wrong. But I'm not saying that a decision has not been made by you. Right. A decision has been made by your subconscious. Right. And that was influenced by your karma and by the mindset you start putting yourself in. And hopefully, as we can start walking down a better path, we can our subconscious can start making better decisions. Better decisions. Right. That's the thing. So, uh, real quick, um, in situations where there are multiple choices, I think uh, your point is well taken. You don't know what the free will is. But let's say in situations there where there's only one choice, theoretically, well, uh, the house is on fire. You gotta run out, right? I mean, I think that's one choice. Uh, can we say the subconscious mind didn't have free will? You had other choices at that point? Okay. You always have the choice to stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are multiple choices. 
You you think there's only one choice. It's a positive. The positive, yeah. You have multiple choices. I, 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 I assume, I assume as a rational thinking mind. I'm telling you that rationality does not exist. So you, you think staying in the house, which is burning, is a viable option? Of course. People have done it. <laughs> monks have set themselves on fire. <laughs> Haven't monks purposely set themselves on fire? Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In protest of various political Sati. decisions. Huh? Sati. 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 That was the Well, I don't know if it was forced on, but it has happened. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so let's think of a scenario where there's only one decision. Let's try to think of one. Let's invite everybody. Can we think of any type of scenario where there's only one decision to be made? The person is drowning. A person is drowning. Okay, so you find yourself in water. So you can decide to drown or you can decide to swim. You don't know how to swim. You should have never gone to swim. You don't know how to swim. And you are drowning. What? Are you su suggesting you are drowning? Or yes, somebody you are drowning. drowning. And you do not know how to swim. Mm -hmm. What other options do you have? Well, one decision is no decision, right? Yeah. You yeah. haven't decided any drown. I mean, aside from that, you actually have made. We'll try it out next week. I'm not swimming. I know I was doing that. I'm just saying that. I wouldn't let that happen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we're proving a point here. At least let me get it on. And we're going to prove what we're talking about. No, but no, but. Uh, Okay, so you're, but you're right. There is no even if well, you want you to can, make a decision. You can choose myself. to yell and ask for help. You can choose to. Pray. You know, yeah, I guess. Pray you for miracle to happen. Uh, you know, you can ask yeah. your daughter to come save you, and you know, True. do a whole bunch of those things. Right. The so there's choices. multiple choices. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 pro too. the problem is, is that we don't think of those multiple choices logically. That's. But that's the decision true. is made. Right. But I mean, because think about uh, that. Kim is saying there is no rationality. I know. I know. We think there are multiple choices, but then uh, we think we have multiple houses to buy, and, but the decision is made already. By the well, I think it's always like that because we are, if, I mean, I can tell you just because I bought a house recently, but I wanted to buy one house and my wife wanted to buy another house. And <laughs> my, my subconscious and conscious brain <laughs> tried to. <laughs> Weigh something differently, you know. But so, that may, that may have had a problem from the beginning conversation of like buying a house versus getting married. Right. So that probably yeah. <laughs> related yeah. to getting married. Is influenced by your marriage. Yeah. yeah. You know? But what I actually wanted to say is, certain you know events come up and people have to react. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Fire is an unexpected thing. It's not. You're not thirsty and therefore having to make a decision. Something, some event has yeah. forced you. A third, a third event, right? Like third the guy, event. the guy in front of you breaks hard. Correct. Right. Correct. You gotta obviously try to break, right? But you have an option. Just yeah, break, right? <laughs> right. That's what you're saying, right? No, I think what we are saying that what what I understood. There's more than one option to that that scenario. That's what we're. Or it is a one option. That decision is made. You are going to take. A, you are going to break. Your karma is going to save you. Your decision is to whatever happens to you, right? Well, you had a choice not to follow that rule. I mean, your sub, your subconscious had a choice to make, and it decided to make it on the order of very short time scales. But um, whether your conscious brain had a decision or not is irrelevant. Okay. Had a decision to make. The only job for your conscious brain is to backward rationalize all the decisions that, that your subconscious right. makes. Okay. And so one of the things we never talk about, right, is that we're all at different levels of faith, okay? We're all, uh, we all believe in the soul, we all believe in different things at different, uh, at, you know, different degrees of faith. And the thing that I want you to take away is that if you were doubting that Gebelnan could be true, or if that karma could control your life, okay, I want you to know that there is a way that it could be true. And by that, there is a way that your soul could exist. And by that, there is a way that the things that Jainism says exist, exist. 
Okay, there is a way and we are on our way to proving that. Okay, so I hope that the thing that you take away from this is that, hey, yeah, I, know, I thought about Jainism at this level, but there's actually a doorway for me to enter to believe that these things are true, that my soul exists and I better, you know, and I better be thinking about that, right? So here's how this guy Sam Harris put it. He's this philosopher. Decisions, intentions, efforts, goals, willpower, etc. are causal states of the brain leading to specific behaviors and those behaviors lead to outcomes in the world. Human choice, therefore, is as important as the fanciers of free will believe. That is, decisions are being made. But the next choice that you make will come out of the darkness of your subconscious, the darkness of prior causes, that you, the conscious witness of your experience, did not bring into being. Okay? So what is there for you to understand is that the choices are already made by your subconscious and your conscious is interpreting those choices. Now, that goes back, of course, into what we were talking about a couple weeks ago with, with the mindfulness, right? You want to try to be mindful of everything that happens in your life you want to take, we all have had a nice experience here and we believed what Thimir was blathering on about for 40 minutes to some extent or another. We believed about this reality not being here, but when we go out and our kids are screaming and we're in the car and we're hungry, what does that have to do with them? I want you to try to take all these lessons out of here. It's one thing to talk about it while we're in here. And it's another thing to think about it in the car and think about how it affects your life and think about... And that's what the whole point is, is to take everything that's out of here and to import it into your life out there. So, questions about comments about any of that? Anybody not believe me? That is perfectly fine. Anybody not believe me that logic, you are not your thoughts, that free will doesn't exist, that... What did we talk about before? <clears throat> That, more that all saying. anger is directed at yourself, that objectivity does not exist, that there are no such thing as facts. This is the day that we've been leading up to, all of last year. If you believe all of those, I am telling you that free will does not exist. Anybody don't believe me? There are cases to be made on the other side, right? This is a contentious debate among philosophers. philosophers. Anybody want to make the case for the other side? I mean, I don't want to make a case for the other side, but what what begs a question on the other side is, should I just live the other side and take it as it comes? Okay, I'm living my daily life, and uh, you know, you have to go to the office, I have to like, you know, tend to my family, my mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. it, like you're talking about destiny, talking about choices. It's already made. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm just a soul. I'm just a human being, soul trapped in that human being, and I'm following what is made. To so, the takeaway that I want you to get out of this is that you put yourself in the situations for your subconscious to make better choices, for your conscious to better rationalize. And so that means that, um, yes, you put yourself in the, in, the, in the scenario where your subconscious brain makes the choice to pray in the morning, makes the choice to perform nirtra makes the choice to use this human life to get rid of your karma. And that, maybe that means not going to the bar on Friday. Maybe that means, you know, getting yourself out of temptation of diff the different kinds that you have. We all have different temptations, you know, whether they be food, alcohol, you know, different things, wasting time, watching television, and we all are subject to different temptations, and I am as well. So let's put ourselves in better scenarios for our subconscious, Let's make the decision about milk and water and orange juice be about prayer and happiness and, you know, and, and not have these other options available to us. That's what I want you to take away. Yeah, so, the little bit I, I understood in the conversation is one, is what I'm getting today or what decision I'm making today with my conscious brain is not uh, my choice at free will. I mean, it is happening because of, I guess, my past karmas is the way I took it. And what I should do is train my subconscious, which is my karma today, will train my subconscious for my future results. 
Absolutely. Right. Okay. So, uh, so it's a kind of training period where we are training our subconscious, where we call it, or our by doing the right karmas, by by doing the, the right things. So, our for whatever decisions, whether we call it future whether, in future decision that will happen for us, will be positive or right. As Absolutely. A and that's called walking the path. And that's called the 12 steps to enlightenment. And that's called getting, taking that first step on your spiritual journey. And, and that way, the next step is only forward and not backwards. Good submission. <laughs> Thank you. Well, appreciate the discussion. <laughs> so thanks everybody for coming. Unless there are any other questions, that's all I have for you today. Good job. Thank you. Thank you.